All righty. Looks like we got a good amount of people in here now. Um, so we are CR Maryland. We're going to go over uh, some various topics, um, you know, what the market's doing and so on. Uh, we'll cut right to the chase today. I have Xander on the call with me. Um, we will dive in and uh, get this underway. So our presentation today, quick little uh, recap here. We're going to talk about the year-to-date statistics about our team, what the market's doing, um, about the housing vouchers, our property management, which is in-house, um, how to invest with us. We'll give you our contact information, how you can reach out to us. Uh, we have four properties that we're going to highlight today, and then we'll open the floor to any questions. Year to date, we have sold 79 properties, um, a little lower than you know we would have hoped, but with the kind of market roller coastering up and down, we're very happy with that number. We have 49 new investors. Um, as you can see, many people buy more than one. Um, I think one of our top uh, investors has over 10 properties with us. Um, we've spent uh, over $8 million renovating homes in Baltimore. Um, and then our average rents are or $1,743. Uh, dollars. Uh, that includes um, two bedrooms all the way up to the three bedrooms. Here is our map of where we kind of attack, uh, where we purchase these properties. Uh, we've done a total of 509 properties in the Baltimore region. We have 10 currently available and 31 under construction, so we constantly have something available. Um, we'll dive into about the property team. And Mike, so one second. We've been in business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, going back to that map, that is specifically the turnkey rental properties. Um, that would not include anything that uh, we've bought and held ourselves or that we've sold as a traditional fix and flip. Um, so this is just the turnkey rental properties. Yep. Awesome. Thanks for clarifying. Um, about our team. So we've been in business since 2004 and have scaled year after year. Uh, we're now to the point where we have renovated and sold over 3,000 homes in multiple states. Um, our property management team has over 500 turnkey properties for nearly 200 investors. Uh, we plan on doing 120 properties in 2024, hopefully more. Hopefully the market kind of allows us to, you know, be able to purchase more. We've been working with uh, directly with the city uh, to, you know, gain more and more access to properties and be able to, you know, generate more uh, purchases in terms of, uh, you know, those vacants that are down there. Um, unmatched renovations. So we are known for our full gut rehabs. Um, we, on average, spend about a hundred thousand dollars on each one. As you could see in the previous slide, we spent over eight million dollars in renovations. Um, so one of the big things that we are known for at CR is doing full gut rehabs. We'll dive into it a little bit later, um, but pretty much head to toe, we're stripping the property down and rebuilding it from the inside out. Uh, last thing on this slide, uh, we are known for the one of the highest real estate developers on the East Coast. Our why. So we're passionate about improving uh, lives in the community um, through real estate. We are focused on renovating single family homes, um, providing top quality housing and improving the neighborhoods as a result. Through our work, we've provided housing to thousands of people. Uh, we've renovated over a thousand vacant properties and have made a tangible impact to many. Like Xander stated, um, a lot of these properties we hold as well. Uh, we're investing in the exact same neighborhoods. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly giving back and, and rebuilding Baltimore. About the property team. So I'll let Xander jump in here in a second, uh, but I'll, I'll kind of cover Paige, myself, and Sheila. So I work directly with the turnkey investors. Um, Paige oversees all operations. She's the go-to there, keeps everybody in check. Sheila is the director of property management. She actually came from city housing. She was one of the managing directors. Uh, so she knows all the ins and outs and all the tips and tricks there. Uh, at the bottom right, we have our property management team, along with the leasing team and maintenance. Uh, those are all in-house as well. So our property management team's in-house, our leasing team and maintenance, we all do 
as a whole under CR. Um, I'll now introduce Xander Cruz, who is the partner, director, of sales, CEO. He holds many hats here. Uh, so if you want to take it away. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thank you for the introduction, Mike. And I think we can go ahead and advance to the next slide. Okay. Um, so Mike touched on our why already, and, and I'll kind of bring that back to the forefront because it's directly related to this. Um, everything that our company does and that all approximately 35 team members are focused on is ultimately improving our community. Um, the vast majority of our employees are directly from the community and we live here uh, and obviously we work here. So we care a lot about the people and creating an impact. And that's why we go through the struggles that we do. Um, that's why we spend so much renovating these houses to deliver a high quality product. Uh, fortunately, not all investors operate that way. And sometimes that gives investors a bad name. Um, so we're, we're working to change that as well. Um, so on this slide, we have our core values. Uh, they're actually right behind Mike on the wall. Um, you can find them in a lot of different places throughout our, our office here. Um, but integrity, community, passion, and accountability are at the core of what we do. And we expect that will show up in the renovation quality, relations with our residents, relations with our owners, and then also relations with uh, people in our marketplace, whether they work for the city directly or their real estate agent um, or a vendor, anything like that. You can go ahead, Mike. Thank you. All right. So typical product. Um, I, I like to tell people that from A to Z, uh, in terms of the product that we specialize in, there is very little difference from one side to the other. Um, so average price point is going to be anywhere from 190000 up to about 230000 uh, Average rents, rent range would be 1675 to about 2000 Average size is typically a three-bedroom, either one or two or two and a half bathrooms. Uh, anywhere from 1000 to 2200 square feet of finished space. And uh, typical cash on cash returns will be between 8 and 13%. Our average annual appreciation in Baltimore is uh, five to seven percent, and that does not include the past couple of years, which were uh, crazy high numbers. Um, I think there's actually somebody on the call we were talking about earlier today. They purchased a property in 2020, and it's appreciated uh, over 40, I think close to 45 percent from the purchase price that they paid to what it's worth today. We don't expect that in the in the normal year. Um, and then average rent appreciation, again, 4 to 8%. Both of those numbers are really strong for a cash flow market. A lot of cash flow markets are very linear and don't have those kinds of uh, growth patterns. Um, so we're really pleased to offer that. So about the market, I like this uh, you know, aerial view to kind of show uh, a lot of people uh, you know, maybe haven't been to Baltimore, uh, but it's relatively pretty small. You can get around very easily. 45 minutes drive to Washington, D.C., uh, about an hour and 40 minutes uh, to Philadelphia. I was actually there uh, a couple weeks ago, made it there in an hour 15. So a little bit of a lead foot, I guess, uh, but pretty close uh, nonetheless. And all the way up to New York, um, you know, about three hours. They do have various bus trips as well. A lot of people, you know, will, will take – uh, you know, hop on a bus at 6 a.m., get to New York uh, around 9, 10 ish, and they do like, uh, you know, nice little day trips there and, and then they take you back. So nice, nice little day trips that a lot of people do drop you right off into Times Square. Um, so here's just a little map that we like to, you know, highlight just to show you that, you know, we are near a lot of other major cities. Yeah. And the Amtrak train system, which you'll touch on in a little bit, I think. Um, is a super easy way to commute between those cities as well. Um, Absolutely. So we have a lot of people that live in Baltimore and work in Washington, D.C. Uh, or again, like Mike said, as they travel up and down the coast, you can do so on the train and avoid traffic. Yep. Yeah, I'll also touch on 95 here as well. Um, 95 runs from Maine all the way down to Florida. Um, so nice. Um, sorry. Sounds like I'm having speaker issues. Turn it up there. Um, so nice little track, um, you know, 
all the way up and down the East Coast, one one road, uh, very easy to get around. Some major employers that we have, Under Armour's headquarters is based uh, out of Baltimore. Um, Johns Hopkins is the largest employer. Um, let's go to T. Rowe Price is a financial firm. They're just outside of Baltimore. They have like eight, eight to 10 high rise, uh, you know, buildings on their campus. Um, and then McCormick, uh, which probably everybody knows as well. Uh, the spices uh, from our office, we can actually, you know, smell some of the spices depending on the, the wind direction uh, here and there. Um, so pretty, pretty large employers. Um, anything to touch on there, Xander? I just think the most important thing is it's a really diverse group of employers. If this is not a one dimensional job market. And it's one, one of the reasons why uh, Baltimore has one of the lowest unemployment rates in the entire nation. Yeah, absolutely. And there's multiple hospitals as well. I know the, the medicine's a big uh, employer here. There's also Sinai Hospital. My sister is the uh, nurse manager there. Uh, we have several properties uh, nearby. So every time I drive to visit a property, I send her a picture of her hospital saying, hey, checking in on you. Um, there's also Mercy Hospital. Um, so, you know, a, a lot of medicine going on down there. Uh, transportation. So we have the Port of Baltimore. Um, there's, you know, tons of cargo going in and out of here. Um, one of our employees, Tia, her boyfriend actually uh, is the manager for the Porsche uh, department and drives 911s and all that stuff uh, all the time. I have a brother-in-law that actually is a crane mechanic there. Um, and he sends me some crazy pictures of all the different ships coming in and, you know, all the work that he's doing. Uh, so they're, they're a large employer as well. And, you know, we have lots of products coming in out of Baltimore. Uh, yeah. Land, we kind of touched on this, uh, 95, uh, we're quick to, um, you know, I think 95 is probably five minutes from, uh, our office. Uh, it runs straight through Maryland. You can travel up and down the East Coast on it. So, you know, there's there's no uh, shortage of being able to transport transport around and, and, you know, drive and visit places. Air. So if anyone comes to visit, which we welcome you to, uh, you'll likely fly into BWI or Dallas National or International. Um, I, I've been more than happy to pick up clients from the airport, you know, drive you around, drop you back off if you want to do a day trip kind of thing, uh, send you some hotels on, on where to stay. Um, but if you're coming to visit, you'll likely fly into BWI or Dallas. The other two are, are a little smaller, Reagan National and Martin State. Um, you know, most people are flying out of the, the bigger uh, airports, though. Baltimore development. So there's been tons of money being dumped on, and this is one of my favorite slides here, dumped into Baltimore. Uh, for those Ravens fans, I know Xander's a big one, goes to most of the games. Um, M&T Bank Stadium is doing a $430 million renovation. Uh, they're adding some, you know, luxury suites, you know, upgrading the uh, stadium there. Um, Penn Station, which Xander kind of touched on, they're doing a $150 million renovation. It's part of um, I think it's close to like a billion dollar renovation on all of the, you know, stations around, but Penn Station and located in Baltimore, they're doing a $150 million renovation. Uh, I would say probably two months ago, I picked up a client that flew into DC to visit her son, uh, came back in and, uh, you know, took, took the train. I picked them up there and they're really, they're really making some leeway on, on that renovation. Um, so it looks good. Uh, I think that's projected for the next year or two to be completed. Um, CFG Arena, $250 million renovation. That was completed this year. Bruce Springsteen actually kicked off the opening. Um, and, you know, th they've had various other concerts from uh, 50 Cent, Shania Twain. Uh, they had Kevin Hart come in. So they're, they're really increasing, you know, concerts and the entertainment field in, in these areas. Lastly is Harbor Place. Um, they're redeveloping um, around the harbor. They're putting in a $500 million renovation, which consists of retail shops, strip malls, um, residential apartments. Uh, they're really developing that. Um, and I've sent 
various uh, emails regarding these developments. But if you you know want to want to hone in, be be more than welcome to uh, you know reach out to us or you know Google it. You can see you know all the renovations and development that they're doing about the housing vouchers. So I'll pass this off to Xander here. Uh, he works directly with the property management team and, you know, keeping up to date on all this information. Yes. And we get a lot of questions about uh, Section 8 housing vouchers. Why do we work with them? What are the benefits? So um, what we'll go through today are the statistics to the bottom line, the same uh, property management process that we use, and then the community impact. Okay, so a couple of numbers to talk through here. Um, actually, this application number, let me take one step back. Earlier in the summer, the city released, uh, Mike, I'm going to mute you real quick. You got to echo. Early in the summer, the city released a, uh, an additional 10,000 vouchers. Um, they had over 40,000 applications in the like four week period that they actually opened up for applications. There's been a wait list where people haven't even been able to apply. Um, so needless to say, there's a really large demand for the vouchers themselves. And then in addition to that, uh, once the vouchers are issued, there's then obviously a demand for housing. Um, so a common question or, or misconception that we get is that somebody with a voucher can't be evicted. Um, that's simply not true. It is the exact same process for eviction. If Even if the voucher program is paying their portion of the rent, if the resident's not upholding the lease, they can and will be evicted and also lose the voucher, which they don't want to do that. Um, so on a typical voucher, it, it'll range anywhere from 50 to 100% of the rent being paid by the program. And that depends on a variety of factors, including the individual resident's income and family size, um, and utilities in the home. Um, of the over 500 homes we have under management, over 60% are voucher based. Uh, and we've been working with the voucher programs now for I think about eight years. Um, so we have a lot of experience with it. We've really mastered, I think as best as you can, the ins and outs of these programs. And we know that they uh, contribute to a better collection numbers, fewer evictions, and then ultimately for our investors, uh, better margins. Um, so going back to the process, we touched on this a little bit, um, but everything is going to be the same in terms of how we actually manage the property and the relationship with the resident. Uh, so whether somebody has a voucher or not, they're gonna go through the exact same application and screening and showing process. Um, we're gonna go through the same uh, non-payment eviction process through the courts. Um, another big question is, uh, you know, unfortunately people ask, well, are these people um, homeless or, or is it just the roughest people in the marketplace? And the short answer to that is no. Um, the longer answer is part of the design of these programs is actually to benefit uh, not just lower class or low income, but actually to the middle class population. Um, so we've had voucher holders that ended up leaving because they bought a house. Um, and, and we've seen that success story several times. So um, the working class population is our target audience for our houses. And a lot of most of the voucher holders that we have are that. Um, rent amounts, uh, like any pricing for anything, there's always some variation, but for the most part, the vast majority of time, the voucher rent is going to be right in line with what where the market rent comps are in the immediate area. Um, and then last but not least, uh, the housing office does an annual inspection. This would be one big difference between the housing office versus a market resident is they're actually doing their own inspection, which is free of charge to the owner. Uh, and then the impact overall that it has Again, we're, we're providing top quality housing to, to people in the community. And oftentimes they are in need in the sense that they're coming from a house that maybe had a serious issue with water damage or something like that, where they need to move and we're able to provide them a brand new renovated house. Um, this also has a huge impact to the neighborhood because most of the time the houses we buy are 
on the on the ugly side, to put it politely. Um, and we're really proud to be able to make the house look brand new again, uh, while still maintaining some of that old charm that they have. Like you can kind of see in the background picture, uh, this houses have a, a rounded front, which is really cool. Um, and the neighbors really appreciate it. We get that constantly. Um, thank you for buying that house. Can you please go buy this house? Uh, conversations like that happen almost every week here. Um, so, uh, the, again, the demand from voucher holders, especially for renovated houses is extremely high. And we've had a great track record now of many years of our clients or, or our residents, I should say, staying for a long time, um, because they're getting quick responses or getting professional treatment. They have their online portals. Um, and, and we really spend and invest a lot to try to make the service the best that it can be. And that leads, that shows up in the renewal rates. And Mike, you can go ahead and advance. Okay, so another common question is, how does the process actually work when we have somebody who has a voucher? So it starts with a showing and then an application. Now, once the application is approved, that's step one here, uh, I'm sorry, that's step two, um, once it's approved, we will then submit, it's called an RTA, the request for housing into the housing office. Now, once that request is in, the housing office will schedule an inspection of the property to make sure it is what we say it is, right? It has three bedrooms, one and a half bathrooms, all of the safety features that are required are present, like smoke detectors and things like that. Um, there's no hazards in the home. Um, and then after they approve the physical house itself, then they're going to review the rent. They're not going to let us rent something for $2,000 if all of the comps in the neighborhood are $1,500. It has to make sense with what the marketplace is showing um, and that the resident is going to be able to afford their individual portion and or utilities, depending on the house and, and what how it's structured. Um, and then last but not least, once they move in, uh, the annual inspection by the housing office at no charge to the owner. Mike, you're muted. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> um, touched on this a little bit earlier um, about our full gut renovation. I'm not going to read everything off to you, um, but the, the big things are brand new roof with a 20-year roof warranty, um, all new HVAC, which comes with a 10-year warranty. Um, appliances are one year. We give you stainless steel appliances in every home. Um, there's a washer and dryer as well. Uh, but pretty much to sum it up, everything that you can see in these two pictures are brand new from the carpet on the steps to the trim, to the drywall, to the paint, to the lighting, um, you know, everything uh, we're replacing it all. That's what, you know, kind of contributes to our large renovation budget. Um, but those are the, uh, you know, things on the left hand side there. Yeah. And please come visit. If you haven't seen this, it's one thing to read it. It's a whole nother thing when Mike walks you through a finished house and then one that we just started. So you can really see just how deep this work is going. Um, and the only other thing I just want to comment on is the, the roofing material that we use. Um, almost every investor in town uses the same kind of roofing material, which is a, uh, they call it a, a torch down. And those roofs only last about 10 years. Um, we pay substantially higher prices to get TPO, which is effectively a commercial roof on these houses. And those roofs should last close to 30 years, which is a really long time for the style house. Um, so we are taking the extra steps like that to really protect our investors long-term and deliver them a quality product. Here's an example of uh, interior photos that we had staged so you can kind of see what it looks like, uh, you know, more livable rather than it being uh, an empty uh, vacant home. Um, so this is, you know, like I said, we got it staged so you can kind of really see the the homey uh, hominess of the properties. Here's an example of a performa that we have, um, you know, I'll highlight. Uh, and I'll, I'll get into it a little bit later as well. We do have a 5.875% uh, rate uh, that is no points to uh, the investor as well. We've secured that through SNMC. 
Um, typical purchase price uh, is going to be the 200 to 230 range. Uh, but I kind of gave you, you know, the, the top dollar amount so you can kind of see what it would look like if you, you know, kind of maximized your purchase price there at 230 down payment, 57, 500, um, total cash invested would be about $68,000. Uh, the rent on that property was 1850. Um, and then your monthly cash cash flow would be about $515. I'll also highlight on the right side, years one, five, and 10 projections, uh, the cash flow, you know, constantly increasing the equities, crazy, <laughs> you know, um, 10,000 your first uh, year owning it, and then jumps to 45,000 uh, year five. So like Xander was saying, there's that five to 7% increase in appreciation. Um, remember that your tenant is, is pretty much paying off your property for you and you're still cash flowing at the end of the day. And, you know, you're just increasing the equity. Um, you know, it's kind of a win-win, uh, in our market here. Yeah. And if, if you're not familiar with Aaron Chapman at SNMC or security national mortgage, um, he's one of our preferred lenders and we have several preferred. However, he's the only one that has this rate available to you as the, the buyer. Um, and it's pretty incredible. So aside from that, I highly recommend that you look up Aaron and follow him. He puts out uh, videos twice a week. He gives tons of great content and information. Um, and he just brings a, a lot of value to your investment strategy. Uh, so can't recommend him enough. And again, this product is awesome to save money on interest expense and increase cash flow. Absolutely. Yeah, I have a slide um, a little bit later that has his contact information. Um, you know, so stay tuned and, and write that down when it comes up. About our property management team. Um, um, in the lender's eyes, they're considered, you know, still single family. Um, they are connected wall to wall. Um, there's no HOAs. A lot of people ask that question. We have no HOAs on our properties. Um, so just considered it a, a single family home with ones next to it. That's what I kind of tell people. <laughs> um, we have full-time property management, uh, leasing and maintenance in-house uh, along with an accounting team. There's 17 plus members and we're constantly growing. Um, all properties are within 30 minutes of our office, quick and easy to get down there. Um, inspections are done at least once a year. There's an optional for additional. Um, we've really honed on, uh, you know, being able to respond to residents and owners within one day. Uh, we've hired a assistant property manager that keeps everybody, uh, you know, up to date. We have, um, you know, set little tasks to make sure that we are, you know, keeping up with the communication um, if there's a certain time frame that goes by, it gives us a notification to make sure that we're jumping on it immediately. Um, we have an online owner and tenant portals as well. We've upgraded our Appfolio to Appfolio Plus, which allows us to, you know, have a little bit more um, access to different options to be able to help communicate and, you know, have a more streamlined process with our owners and tenants. Yeah, we've invested a lot, um, both time and money into improving and adding additional technology and automation. Um, and it's made a huge impact. Uh, you know, fortunately for, for quite a few years, we, we managed properties and, and communicated with our owners just off of email, um, which doesn't really sound that bad until you consider if our team receives three or 400 emails a week, it's very easy for something to fall through the cracks. And it really leave, left us exposed to human error. Um, so we we have a, an entire technology that's dedicated to that, that I can view, Mike can view, Paige can view, Sheila can view at any given time and make sure that, um, you know, Bruce's question that he emailed a day ago has been answered, or if it hasn't, that we're going to get him an answer. Um, so we've come a really long way with technology. And the best part is for our owners, they only have one portal and one login. So it's not like you have to go register for three different we'll systems. Everything else is internal on our end. Our property management fee summary. So we have no um, tenant placement fee for the first year. Um, the majority of the time you're gonna pay one month's rent. 
Uh, for a lease renewal, it's going to be 25% of the one month's rent. Um, our monthly management fee is 8%. The industry standards are going to be around 10%. Um, so, you know, purchasing a property with us, we already kind of give you a nice little discount there. Um, we have in-house maintenance team that's constantly, you know, running around Baltimore, uh, you know, fixing anything if, if needed. Um, the good thing is most of our properties or all of our turnkey properties are brand new. So there should be little to no maintenance for quite some time. Um, we work with some third party vendors as well on, you know, some things that we can't do. Um, there's no markup on maintenance and the pets allowed is at the owner's discretion, kind of up to you. Um, you know, some people allow it. Some people want nothing to do with it. Uh, we're on your side either way, whichever decision you want to make. Um, here's the fee summary. So average tenant turnover time is about two weeks. Our average vacancy rate is 1.5%. Our average monthly rent collection is 98%. So pretty big numbers there. We were pretty pleased. Uh, we had a meeting last Thursday. Uh, you know, we, we like to celebrate those numbers there. Um, average tenant stay two to three years with an 88% renewal rate as well. So we love these numbers. and. and Hopefully things just keep keep getting better and continue to, you know, see higher and higher percentages there. Yep. How to invest. So here's a nice little, um, you know, kind of steps on, on what to do here to reserve a property. You will get a pre-approval from a preferred lender. Um, on the next slide, I'll have Aaron Chapman's information for you to get the pre-approval. Um, you can email us at md turnkey at crmaryland.com to be added to our buyers list. You can email us directly with any questions that you want to see or, or any questions that you have as well. Um, all of our properties are on a first come first serve basis. At the end of this uh, webinar here, I will send um, the four properties that I'm going to highlight here soon. Um, they do go quick. I actually had somebody recently that had interest in a, a few properties and the two that he really liked uh, went that same day. Um, so they, they can go pretty quickly. Um, you know, you kind of want to move as, as fast as you can. Um, we um, request that you put a $35 EMD earnest money deposit down on the property. Uh, our typical contract to closing is within 40 days, sometimes quicker, um, you know, generally no longer. Um, you're also, uh, you know, to see some properties and, and, more details on how we work, uh, you can go to crmaryland.com and click invest. And Mike has tons of so highlight information to share with you. If, if you reach out and sign up or email, Mike can send you anything you ask for. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, highlighting security national. So if you want to take a picture, write this down, um, all the best, do it. Um, like uh, Xander was saying, Aaron Chapman is, is amazing. Um, even if you don't actually use him, which, you know, we obviously encourage you to because he's has the best rate right now. He will, you know, he, he'll give you the most knowledge you can possibly think of. He walks you through. Um, he has an app to help you understand the appreciation and, and the growths. Um, he's just an overall really, really good guy. And he's looking out for you no matter what. Um, he's the number seven loan originator in the country. Um, his contact information is below. We encourage you to reach out. Um, he really is a great guy. So here's our available properties. These are what I'm going to show or, or send, send you all at the end of the call here. Um, 620 Denison Street. Uh, you're going to look at about $497 uh, a month in cash flow. Um, when I send these properties to you, it'll have progress pictures, finished photos, um, rental comps, the performa description on the area, you know, you'll have, you know, everything at your fingertips. And if you have any additional questions, reply back and I'll be more than glad to, you know, answer them. Or if you want to set up a call, we can go over them as well. I'll walk you through the performas and all the projections and everything. Um, we have 3,010 West Landvale, which you're going to look at about 372 dollars a month in cash flow. Um, 5,030 or 5,023 Child Grove. That's kind of a more cottagey feel. Uh, that's located near Sinai Hospital where my sister works. So that's kind of a, a nice property that I've driven by. 
a little cottage feel, uh, $333 a month in cash flow. And then the last one is 1649 Carswell Street, looking at just about $400 a month in cash flow. Any questions? We're going to open up the floor um, to anybody. I'm sure Xander has an influx there if you want to read them through and answer them. Yep, and just drop any questions in the chat. Um, let's see. First question from Donald, insurance rates, and are they increasing? Um, I would say just across the board, yes, insurance rates are increasing everywhere, uh, not just locally. However, uh, our increases have been really modest. Um, I, you know, fortunately, my, or I guess fortunately for her, my cousin lives in Florida, which is the fortunate thing. The unfortunate thing is her insurance went up $400 a month. We see nothing like that here. Um, on average, our owners are getting uh, annual quotes right in the $800 range for these houses. Um, and you get you get some advantages on the rate because of all the renovation work that was done. Um, and two, does allowing pets increase the insurance cost? And the answer would be no. Uh, they do not, the, the insurance providers that I've seen do not ask about pets. Um, I think it's just common for the landlord policies. They know people have pets. Um Next question would be, how long do you wait to evict for non-payment with the voucher program? The timing is the same for everybody. So when you reach, and I forget the date, it's been a while since I thought about this, but um, I think it's the 20th, it could be the 10th, something like that. Anyway, when you reach a certain point in the month, anybody who has not paid for their portion of rent, whether they have a voucher or they're a market tenant with no voucher, um, we begin the court filing process they're served with a, a written notice. They get a notice posted on the door. Awesome. And then that following that, there's going to be a court date. Um, now, the only exception to this is the voucher program itself and the rent that they uh, pay. So if we move in a voucher holder today, the voucher program has a lag before they hit their payments. So you might not get paid until February for the December and January rent from the voucher program, but it'll all come in one lump sum. And then after that, it'll hit on the first of every month. Um, so again, that's why we like the program uh, because it's so reliable. Um, let's see, property taxes, uh, $1,200 a year on average. The answer would be yes, that is about the average we see. Of course, some might be higher and some might be lower. Um, and then the second question is, do you have to use a voucher program uh, the short answer is we really cannot discriminate either way. Um, so it's not an opt-in or opt-out. It's actually a uh, state law that you cannot uh, specifically say no vouchers. Um, but I'll, I'll preface that by adding we, the, the screening process we go through is extremely stringent and thorough. Um, our uh, leasing team and leasing manager, and then also Sheila, the director, uh, take a lot of pride in in the fact that they're this it sounds bad but it's actually a good thing they're really good at catching things and applications that people might be lying about or misrepresenting um, they're really good at digging deep um, we've had applicants uh, you know provide pay stubs where the math doesn't line up and our team is catching those kinds of things and rejecting those applicants um, so if you're going to end up with a voucher holder in the house, they've passed an extremely thorough screening process, including talking to their previous landlords. Um, Irene asks, is Maryland landlord friendly? My favorite way to respond to this question is uh, Maryland is not Texas. I just want to be crystal clear on that. This is not Texas, um, but it's also not New York or California. Uh, it's pretty balanced. It's like right down the middle. Um, so I wouldn't call it landlord friendly. I wouldn't call it tenant friendly. It's honestly pretty fair. And I don't see average time to evict. Um, I would say an average is going to be three months. Uh, fully Full disclosure, though, in the holiday season, that, that gets longer. Um, I think that between the courts and the sheriff office, um, they really try not to put people out in this period right around the holidays. Uh, so if you get an eviction date in early December, it might actually be a January date that they're they're telling you. Um, but three months is an average. Okay, questions keep flowing in. Um, 
do we invest in A class regions or just B and C? Um, we are primarily B. We have the occasional A minus property. We just uh, actually the one we just sold settled last week was was a solid A. Um, it's typically a much higher price point, so we don't really see many opportunities there. Uh, but it is they occasionally do pop up. Um, and then C, we really try to stay out of C. Um, and Mike can walk you through that on, on an individual basis. So every once in a while, we'll have something that's going to be a lower price point because it might be a C plus. Um, but you would know that up front. It, it's not going to be a surprise later. Um, and let's see. Oh, it's a great question, Fred. Uh, every resident is required to carry renter's insurance, regardless of if they have a voucher or not. It's a condition of our lease. Um, it's actually a condition of to even move in the house. It cannot move in until they provide the renter's insurance. Um, and we have several, we actually have a, a program, right. it's called the resident benefit package, uh, that has an option for insurance and it's very inexpensive. It's like $10 a month just for the insurance. Um, and then they'll also get some other benefits on top, like air filters sent to the house, um, reporting to credit bureaus and some other perks and benefits. So, um, it is required for everybody though. And I think I missed one here. Uh, occupancy rate, uh, the vacancy rate hovers around one and a half percent. So 98 and a half percent occupied, um, average time to rent. I like to tell people to, to plan on an average of three weeks for an approved applicant. Again, that's an average. Many properties go super fast. Um, but then the individual move in dates also going to vary depending on when you get the inspection, when they're moving out of their other lease, things like that. Um, uh, so regarding 1031 exchanges, uh, our the title company that we use has uh, a 1031 exchange. Uh, I don't know if it's an arm or a subsidiary or, or a separate company, but they do offer that service. Um, so if you're interested in that, let us know. We can connect you with them um, and you can uh, certainly learn more. And we, we deal with buyers a lot that are doing 1031. So absolutely, we probably have one a month um, that are doing it, if not more. Uh, so yes. Okay, uh, Donald. Uh, so our the way our property management fee works is it is on, or, or I'm sorry, the eight percent is charged regard is charged year round. So regardless of collected or not collected or vacant, um, ultimately our team is extremely motivated to have that rent be collected and or the house occupied. Um, because unfortunately for us, a vacant property requires substantially more work. We're sending people to check on the house several times a week. We're doing showings, screenings, et cetera. Um, so uh, we're extremely motivated. And uh, we also incentivize our teams to uh, hit those numbers, wh what our goals are each month. Um, so there's bonuses available for for reaching goals. Um, so we, we're, we're still aligned on that. I know that's how most property management companies operate. Um, and let's see, I don't see any other questions. Anybody else have anything? All right, well, if no other questions come in, um, that will basically conclude the webinar. Mike, I believe has everyone's email. He's gonna send you the properties to look at. Um, please respond with questions. Please schedule a tour. Uh, I know Mike has a tour on Friday where we really like having people here. Um, so you can actually see the product and our, uh, what I consider our wonderful market. Um, I might be a little bit biased, but uh, this is where I invest. This is where I live. And um, uh, the crazy thing just for perspective is um, when Mike has a visitor uh, over 90% of the time, they'll purchase property from us. Um, so the, it really does show up when you come and visit us. Um, so I don't see any other questions. Uh, Mike, anything else you want to add? Um, no, just be on the lookout. I'll send you the uh, four properties that I highlighted. Um, I'll send you my calendar link as well. If you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call, um, and yeah, come, come visit. I'll take you to lunch and, uh, we'll feast and visit Baltimore and visit some areas and check out some properties. Um, it'll be a good time. Yeah, we didn't touch on it. We have a great restaurant scene, lots of good restaurants. So yeah, we do. <laughs> well, thank you all for attending. We really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we're all talking very soon.
Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a nice uh, New Year's, everybody. Take care. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye.